Hey, you've got the Smoke Meat Podcast with your host, Brad Pittman. Uh, we are sponsored by Joe's Underground in Augusta, Georgia, at the corner of 8th and Broad. Great place, great people. Gotta love Jeremy and the gang down at Joe's. Uh, right now, they're closed because of this big quarantine we've got going on, but you can rest assured as soon as we can. We're going to open back up. We're going to have a big old party. We're going to have a great time. be like going back to see family again. Uh, so just bear with us. Remember, I go to Joe's and so should you. Today, my guest on the Smoke Meat Podcast, someone everybody's familiar with. If you're not, you've been living under a rock or on another planet. Uh, a young man by the name of Scotty Schwartz. Uh, you may know him from the movie The Toy or as Flick from the Christmas story, the kid that stuck his tongue to the pole. Uh, he's done a lot of other cool stuff. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna talk to him and just have a good time. So we're gonna get this thing kicked off here on Smoke Meat. Hey, how you doing today, Scott? Doing good. Outstanding, man. How, how's the weather out there in California right now? Uh, I think it's supposed to be like between 80 and 90 today. Oh, man. Outstanding. Outstanding. It, yeah, Mother Nature's drunk here in Georgia. One minute it's cold, the next minute it's hot. One minute it's sunny, the next minute we got tornadoes. So. Oh, listen, we had, uh, we had rain for... Four or five days in a row, that just doesn't happen very often. Yeah, it's big out in California. That's kind of a record almost, isn't it? That's pretty much. I mean, the grass is growing at a, it's an alarming rate. It's a pew, here we go. Oh, man. Well, cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad I was able to catch up with you, man. I, I've been looking forward to doing this since I talked to Steve, and he's, he's set me up with some pretty good people. I'm, I'm having a great time doing this. Uh, okay. So... I've looked on you on the IMDb because I do that with everybody. I'm I'm gonna, you know, interview and I mean you you got such great stuff. I knew you before I even looked on there, but I, I remember seeing the toy in theaters. You know, just your your first movie as a kid, and you're with Richard Pryor and Jackie freaking Gleason. Really, man, <laughs> that is that's, that's just amazing. What it, that's, that's what it was supposed to be. Oh man. I, I I could not even imagine working with either of them, and here you just you had both of them, and that that is so cool. Uh, it was and it is. There's no question. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, I, I've heard the stories that Richard Pryor was just such a such a great guy and such. It, he was he was one of a kind. Yeah, I mean, listen, there were two different Richards. There was the one before. He burned himself up in the one after. And the one after was a much more kindler, gentler man, uh, very studious, very sharing and giving of information. You asked the question, he would answer it. There wasn't a subject he wasn't, you know, informed about. Mm -hmm. He was just one incredible human being, no question. Man, the world needs more of those, that's for sure. That's for well, sure. Well, the world needs more people to have logic and 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 be sensible and reasonable yeah. and he had loads of it you know he was the biggest star in the world and uh no ego none you know i even asked him one time i said you know i said richie i come over here and you, know, you don't have an ego he so he said well what's that and i said it's an ego it's a mindset he goes i understand that he goes it doesn't help me pay my bills. doesn't help me take care of my kids. not going to put a roof over my head or food on the table. So why should I bother to have it? It's a waste of time. You got a good point. You know, but I mean, that, that's coming from somebody who's on top that could have the ego. You know, I mean, Jackie Gleason had an ego. He was an egomaniac for decades. Mm -hmm. And people knew it. But he earned that respect and he deserved that respect, you know. Jackie Gleason was Mr. Gleason or the Great One. You could call him Great One, and he would respond to that. Oh, that now, way. if you called him Jackie, you know, on a set, oh my God, forget it. You know, uh, Richard Donner, our director, and Ray Stark, the producer, they could call him Jack because they had put in their time, and they they gained that respect. Whereas me, on the set, it was Mr. Gleason, always Mr. Gleason. I actually, uh, about maybe four or five weeks in to shooting, uh, he invited me into his trailer. He wanted to talk about the scene that was upcoming, whatever. And I, oh, Mr. Gleason, he says, look, in here, it's okay. You can call me Jack, but out there, you have to call me Mr. Gleason. 
because it was a respect thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was honored that he even said that to me at all. Yeah, you know, yeah. but uh, he, he, he was a piece of work. But Flyer, you know, more people should have gotten to know him the way I did. Yeah. Because, you know, people would just be different. You know, I see the egos that are out there. As if one person really is more important than another. You know, we understand the position of being a celebrity or a star. I get that point of it. But when it comes down to it, we all have to eat. We all have to go to the bathroom. We all have to sleep. We got to shower. We put our pants on the same way. You know, it just becomes a power of one person over another. Yeah, you know, and I, I, it's funny. Ego works in so many things. I'm I'm a paramedic, and I've been one forever. And you know, I I, I see people that I call big word medics. You know, the ones that say things like, you know, he's very diaphoretic. Well, that's just a fancy word for sweaty. Why not just say sweaty? You know, some people. Listen, that, your your job, realistically, again, I, I always say break it down. Your job is much more important to the world than any entertainer. You help people. You save lives. You take care of people. That is a much more important job than somebody who's on a television or somebody who's on a screen. Your job is not as entertaining. We understand that. I don't know. It's pretty entertaining sometimes. <laughs> okay. But I mean, to yeah. you, but the basics of, you know, the masses, you know, people should look at you with a, an incredible amount of respect for what you do, mm. as opposed to somebody who's on television. Well, I appreciate that a bunch. But you know, you, you've got That's to... reality. Yeah. That's reality. That's real. You know? I certainly don't see any A-list celebrity getting out there and being able to take somebody in a wheelchair or a hospital bed or a gurney and throw them in an ambulance and take them to a hospital and give them a test in an ambulance or whatever the case may be. None of us can do that. that that's what truly helps the members of society. Not being on television making somebody laugh. That lasts for 10 seconds or 30 seconds. And that's it. People go on there to their daily lives. What you do impacts lives, and, and that's an extremely important position in, in our society. Uh, I appreciate that a lot. You know, and it just, I, I try and be, you know, try not to have an ego doing it because we, we do have people who have egos that, like, say they're trying to, you know, innovate somebody, put a tube in somebody's throat. That's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, you may have one or two chances, and you just need to move on to a different thing to to do it. And I've known people who will try five or six times just because of their ego. And I, I don't have one. I look at it this way. Like, say, it's, I can either look really good by bringing a dead person in with an airway, or I can just help this person to live and do what I've got to and not worry about the way I look. And, uh, you well, you get, you know, you get people that put in their time in their job and they feel they have a certain status, therefore, yeah. when reality is, you know, as important as their job is, as important as your job. Yeah. You know, rather live uh, in a sensible way to make everybody feel comfortable, to make everybody feel good. That should make that person feel good. Maybe. There are a lot of people that just want to be bowed down to. Yeah. You know, I've I've never been a yes man. That's what most big celebrities have. They have yes people because those people want their job. You know, but if the person that they're taking care of or their whatever it is, if they were to interject logic sometimes and say, hey, listen, you know, I know you want to do this, but these could be the ramifications of it, just looking at it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Most people will respect that. Some won't, because their egos are out of proportion. Mm-hmm. You know, we 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 all age. Time stops for no man. Whether you are Elton John, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, yesterday they were all twenty five. Today they're not twenty five anymore. Yeah. So yeah. everybody should think the same way. Treat people with dignity, with respect, be good to their fellow man. The world would be a much better place. 
And you know what's funny is during this stuff, I'm actually seeing a lot more of that with people, you know, just, I don't know if it's the social distancing or if it's just people realizing, okay, we are, we are fragile, whether we like to admit it or not. And you I know, think people are being a little bit better to each other right now. Listen, that's, that's right now because yeah. we're in the middle of this thing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm a, the New Jersey boy. I grew up there native. I, I call it native New York, even though I grew up in New Jersey. I was 45 minutes from Manhattan mm-hmm. when nine 11 hit. Everybody was more understanding, more compassionate, more kind to each other. Then we kind of lost that for a while. Yeah. And now we're back into something else that really has affected everybody. Yeah. Now everybody is kind again. Once this thing passes, let's see if we can stay on the path of being kind to your fellow man. I really hope we can. Because, I mean, it's... You know, people, people, listen, people have short memories. That's just the way the world is. People have short memories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you, you this, know. this stuff right now, and the thing that people ain't realizing is that everybody is so anxious to just get out and do and do and do. This thing doesn't know age, sex, color, sexual orientation, religion, anything. It just knows, let's get this one. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, this is something the world has never faced. Yeah. In, in, a, in a global standpoint. You know, we've had pandemics, we've had sicknesses and illnesses, but not something that crossed borders, that crossed the entire globe. And that's what we have. So, you, you know, everybody should adjust to what they need to adjust. Stay calm. Don't get crazy. You know, you got doctors and scientists all over the world working on this thing. Just be patient. You know, and all we can do is hope for the best. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we, we can fear the worst, but we have to hope for the best. Exactly. And, you know, one, one thing I've been doing, because... If, if I'm not at work, when I come home, I actually come to my basement. You know, I've got my studio set up down here, kind of my man cave. I call it the studio to make it sound all fancy, but it's my laptop and my stuff on a dirty little table. But hey, it works. And I, I stay down here to keep away from my wife and kids because I am so high risk because of my job. And I don't want to get them sick. And uh, But one thing I've got to do... That can be tough. It's, that it's, can be tough. You're, you're in a... You're in a different position because you're out and about and you can be exposed. Yeah. You try not to be exposed, of course, you know, yeah. um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe it's worth sending your wife and kids to grandma's or grandpa's or whatever, you know, your parents' house, their mm-hmm. or her parents' house, someplace where they know that they, they for sure will be much safer. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, well my wife has a job can, that she she's essential to. My wife actually um, runs a nursing home. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so double whammy. I'm, I'm staying away so I don't get her or the people that she's there with sick. And They have done such an awesome job through this thing, you know, keeping on top of everything, keeping their people safe. And yeah. So they, they have done so great. My kids are doing wonderful. I've got teenage girls, and... They are just the goofiest girls in the world. They, they have watched more Spongebob through all this thing. Now they're watching videos of people playing the grandma game. Have you seen those? Mm-hmm. Oh, they, they are watching those things nonstop and just cackling at them. Listen, you know, you just think about it. You know, you, you're probably, what, in your 40s? Yeah, 47. Okay. I'm a few years older than you. Not many, but a few. Yeah. But think about this. If this happened 15 years ago, 12 years ago, before social media, before, you know, uh, uh, the internet boom, we had the internet, you know, but it wasn't like it is today. There'd be a lot less things for people to do. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have all the different things we can just watch on our laptops, you know, or phones. Look at the, the, you know, evolution of phones over the last 15 years. You know, everybody can stay in touch with everybody on the phone. You can text, you can take pictures, you can send pictures, emails. You know, this stuff is, it's wild, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of things that people take for granted. You know, oh, I, I need this. No, you don't need this. Trust me. We grew up in an era you didn't have this. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, I, I, I like the fact that most people are trying to do the right thing, you know, in the places where it's not so bad and they're kind of they're letting people go out. Okay, I got no problem with that. As long as they're being safe and not stupid, okay, fine, you know. You know, but I mean, kids that have been locked up for weeks already, you want to let them out and go play together, okay. We know they haven't been, you know, uh, you know, um, yeah, they haven't been exposed. Exposed to any yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. They've been locked up. You know, they're still kids. Yeah. You know, they don't have the understanding, the mental capacity to really understand what we're going through. Teenagers, they can kind of understand to some yeah. degree. But kids, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh my God. We were outside all the time. Football, baseball, basketball. Yeah, mom, mom had to scream around, for me to come in the house, you know. Street hockey, you know, whatever we did. You know, this this generation, they're getting hammered right now. You know, and you know, you just gotta have hopefully decent parents who can sort of explain in a way that their children can understand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, but, you know, the great thing about it, that, that you know, with all the instant stuff now, is people are going back and revisiting a lot of the old movies and TV shows and stuff they hadn't watched in years. And, you know, that's that's kind of neat. I'm enjoying doing that. Yeah. You know, again, this generation, they, they, they know the stuff that's still on, but they'll, they'll watch new stuff before they'll watch old stuff just because. Yeah. No reason, but just because, you know. Yeah. You know, you want to expo expose kids to, you know, the shows from the 70s and 80s and 90s that they necessarily didn't get to watch. Yeah. You know, the Frasers and uh, Friends and Seinfeld. You know, those were fun shows. And yeah. again, we got nothing to do. You know, I understand you have a full-time job. Life's still full-time. But kids, let yeah. them get exposed to the stuff that's fun. Not the garbage. Yeah. You know, if a kid sits in front of a television and they got to watch 12 hours of keeping up with the Kardashians, give me a break. Yeah, we don't do those in the house at all. Uh, yeah. No. I'd rather sit him down and say, hey, watch a season of Friends or watch a season of Frasier or watch a season of Seinfeld. You know, my God, watch a season of The Love Boat. I don't care. <laughs> Fantasy Island, Dallas. Oh, God, these were great shows, you yeah. know. Yeah, I remember I had the, the good stuff. Remember having the I shot JR T shirt. Oh, I was a Dallas fanatic, man. Oh yeah. Love Dallas. Every Friday night, CBS, eight o'clock, here we go. Yep. Same here. You know, who shot JR? You know. And oh. uh when they did the reboot of Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, it was just great. You know, I mean I had by that time, I had met Larry Hagman several times and Patrick Duffy and Linda, and Charlene, one of my friends, uh, you know, Tilton, mm -hmm. um, you know. So, I mean, it was great to see them back on the show. It was different, yes, um, but great to see the reboot and the kids on the show, the younger generation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that played the younger G JR and Bobby's kid. It was great because it was it was fun, good television that we really got into. It was that nighttime soap opera that we love. Great, great writers, great producers. The cast was great. You know, I love the new Dallas. If, if Larry hadn't passed away, they would have gone on another couple of seasons. And, you know, I didn't get to see the new one. And I really it wanted to. It was great. It was great. You got to watch them. Yeah, I'm going to have to find it and watch it because I'm, I'm always looking for new stuff to watch. I've, I've got my go-tos that I'll binge watch on something if I just can't find anything else. But there's only... Do, do, do you have Showtime? I have actually just got Showtime. Okay, there's a show on Showtime. The show name is Episode. Episodes. Mm -hmm. E-P-I-S-O-D-E-S. Episodes with Matt LeBlanc as the star. Okay. Okay. It may be, outside of Seinfeld, one of the funniest shows I've, I've watched in the last decade. Okay. It's not a kid's show. It's not for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's an adult show, you know. Um, and it is absolutely hilarious. 
I've turned many people onto the show, and they go, oh, my God, this uh, is great. I may check that out tonight while I'm at work if we get quiet. Yeah, I'm always looking for something new to watch. Oh, you'll watch the, the first one to two episodes, and you'll be hooked. Oh, man, outstanding. Yeah, I, I'm always looking for something new because, like I say, I've got my go-tos. I, I, I never understood that old guy when I was younger. And I figured out now that I'm turning into him really quick because a lot of music today I don't like, but I still listen to Metallica, Skinner, you know, all the old stuff. And, well, <laughs> that, and I mean, that is a simple thing. Yeah. That is called quality. Exactly. You had singers, songwriters. You had true performers. You know, they weren't you know, running through amplifiers and through all the different things that they can change voices and do this and do that. Yeah. You know, you know, your music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, some great, incredible music and great songwriting. Now it's about packaging. Man. That's what this is. It's just about packaging. Get them in, get them out. Today they're here, tomorrow they're gone. There's very, very few that stand the test of time unless they have some quality. Are there good people nowadays? Absolutely. You know, it's just not in the numbers, and unfortunately there's too much garbage that's made. Yeah. You know, I, you know. I talk about the new country music. You know, I'm, I like old country. But uh, there's a guy, Chris Stapleton. My, my wife actually told me about him, and I started listening to him. And he does a, a version of a Tennessee whiskey, old George Jones song. But the way that he's got his drums mic'd and that, the, just the, his sound on that song puts me back in every little old bar I was in back in the early early 2000s. And it just, he is, he's an exception. I like him a lot because he's he's not trying to over-process. Yeah, listen, I'm, I, I'm not a country guy. Yeah. I grew up in New Jersey. I live in L.A. Not the L.A. thing is really uh, influenced me one way or the other. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the stuff you listen to from 5 to 20 is the stuff you're always going to love. Yeah. You know, after that, you kind of just go and see what happens and what and, and what people, new people come out. Yeah. There are great voices. There are people that are not great voices. You know, Christina Aguilera has an incredible voice. Mm -hmm. Kelly Clarkson has an incredible voice. Um, you know, Lady Gaga. You know, I didn't know Lady Gaga's song if you put it in front of me. I wouldn't have known who it was. Yeah. And she did that HBO thing, and my brother said to me, hey, you know what? She really is good. You should watch this. Okay, fine. I watched it. She opened up her mouth, and she was incredible. Yeah, she, she's got you some know? talent. You know, like said, it's all the packaging, you know? They... Yeah, but I mean, a lot of yeah. her in the early days, they packaged her like Elton John in the 70s. Yeah. She was a female version of Captain Fantastic. That's what she was, but all the crazy dresses and all the crazy things. I saw pictures of her, and I'm like, oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. But when she opened her mouth, that's what sold me as a consumer to say this girl has really got some incredible talent. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I grew up in the songwriting era. You know, Jim Croce, you know, um, oh, God, uh, uh, Cats in the Cradle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't think of his name. Um, uh, that was... Oh, my goodness. Uh, Harry Chapin. Yeah, Harry Chapin, yeah. That was on the okay. tip of my tongue. Streisand, Neil Diamond, Barry Manilow. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but then, I mean, you get a little bit older and you look at other things. So, I mean, yeah, I looked at ACDC once in a while or Metallica. You know, I wasn't really the, the Florida-Bard rock guy. You know, the hair bands, the 80s, yeah. Okay. You know, Bon Jovi and Warren and Cinderella and OK Fine. They had some great tunes, you know. Yeah. Journey's one of my favorite bands, you know, but I was a Bee Gees guy. I love the Beatles. I've, I've been on, on an REO Speedwagon kick here lately for some REO reason. Speedwagon, absolutely. I mean, yeah. those were great bands. Queen, Queen was incredible. Oh, man. And I'll tell you. You know, but, but, but they had talent, okay? Yeah. Freddie Mercury commanded a stage. He was great. Never oh. got to see him live. Seen him plenty on video. Yeah. Um, Freddie Mercury is the closest thing to Elvis that I can give a comparison. Elvis Presley has been my, one of my favorites since I'm five years old. 
Oh, I'm all over um, that one. You know, but Queen was an incredible band, you know, and it wasn't about what my agenda was. They let the music speak for itself. Yeah. You know, Freddie didn't have to come out and say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm gay, I'm this, I'm that, whatever. Not what he did. He lived his life, but the music is what stood out. That's what he wanted people to care about, not who he was or what he did. Yeah. Today, we don't have that. Now it's, hey, I'm a member of the LGBT community, and I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm this. And I'm like, that's nice, <clears throat> but I really don't care. Yes, like open am. your mouth. <laughs> let me. You're a singer. Open your mouth. That's what I want to know. That's what's going to make me become a fan of yours. You know, yeah. the talent is what sells the product at the end of the day. Yeah. And the continuation. Why the Beatles, Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, these people are gone. Oh. And they still sell just as much as everybody from today. Why is that possible? Because the quality of the entertainment was a 10 on a scale of 10. And everybody you just mentioned is actually on my Napster playlists. Yeah. I, I go from Wayne you know, Newton you, to Rob Zombie to Eminem. Did. I mean, there you go. I, I'm not it's a talent. specific genre guy. I'm like, yeah, I like talent. I like stuff that isn't auto tuned. Yeah. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a big country guy, but if, you know, the Carrie Underwood song comes on that I know, I listen to that, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I, I, um, um, oh, God. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think of his name, and it's just going to evade me, so I get it. But, uh, you know, country's got its fan base, and it's got some great talent. Oh, yeah. You know, no question. I'm just not a country guy. Yeah. Not where I grew up. That's not what it, that's not what my family listened to. That's not what any of my friends listened to. I just can't believe so country wasn't big in New Jersey. <laughs> no, no, not not on the radio. You had one station that played country, and that was it. You couldn't listen to a mainstream, uh, uh, regular station, and hear country. It was rock, soft rock, hard rock. You know, they they play an you know a Bon Jovi song followed by Judas Priest. Mm -hmm. You know, Metallica, and then they go to you know whatever else Warren. You know, Cinderella, whatever it was. Yeah. You know, the top 40, whatever, and most of it wasn't country. So, not you know, 90% of it wasn't country. Yeah. You know, but that's okay. I don't say people who like country are bad people. That's what you like, no problem. Enjoy, God bless. See, my, Listen, my main we are thing here is, a short time in our lives. Just enjoy whatever you want to enjoy. My main thing is like 80s, 80s music and 80s metal. And, you know, music from the 70s. That's my, that's my go-tos. Oh. Listen, Guns N' Roses. Oh, man. You know, you know, I mean, there are so many people that I, I have spoken to over the years, you know, and Guns N' Roses, it's Paradise City, and it's, uh, you know, uh, whatever else, you know, but very few people mention November Rain. Oh, November Rain was a Where, symphony, man. That and was... that's the point. I, I, My favorite Guns N' Roses song in November Rain. Hands down, that's it. There is no question. From a musical standpoint, from a singing standpoint, it's great. Yeah. It's a great song. You know, listen, again, Bohemian Rhapsody is Queen's number one song. There's a reason why. It's an incredible song. You know, yeah, you got all the other tunes that they did, and they're fun, and they're great, and everybody loves them. Okay, but, but there's something about those ballads. Or rock ballads that are just great. I, I tell you a song you know, a lot um, of people don't think about that. To, to me, it's musically one of the greatest songs of, that ever. And uh, you're going to giggle at me, but the theme song from Shaft. If you listen to the good tune. the moving parts in that song, holy crap! Isaac Case was the composer from hell. I mean, it was. Yeah, just, I mean, it's 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 a great song. But then, I, then we go the other way. Personally, again, I think probably one of the top five songs ever written is Let It Be mm -hmm. by the Beatles, by Paul McCartney. It's just, it's a moving song. It emotionally moves me. Yeah, and it's simple. And it, and it was simple. Yeah. You know, Yesterday. Yesterday is a very simple song, and it's great. 
you know, and there's so many songs that they did that you just, you scratch your head and you go, oh my God, these came out of these few guys' brains. Oh my God. Yeah, and so many of them. You know, and it just, yeah, you know, like I say, it's just, and there's there's not a lot like that now at all, if any. You know, um, oh God, this, the, the, the Lady Gaga song, uh, 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 born this way, mm-hmm. you know, it's from a music, music, musical, musical standpoint. It's an okay song, yeah. But the lyrics and the words, great tune, great tune. You know, there's just not enough of the quality stuff that's made. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, you know, stuff that I just I don't appreciate because it's just not up my alley, as they say. I don't, I'm not a rap guy, you know, never was, you know, uh, uh, run DMC, you know, walk this way. Okay. You know, all right. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not into the obscene lyrics mm-hmm. of the stuff that they do now. I just don't think it's necessary. Yeah, you know, I just don't, I don't believe that it's necessary for that. They want to make it, you know what, it's their right. First Amendment right, free speech, you want to do it, go for it. I don't have to buy it. Exactly. You know, you know, I don't have to spend my hard-earned dollars to go and do that. Not when, you know, <clears throat> you know, Neil Diamond writing great songs. Carol King wrote some incredible songs. She just did a, you know, a, a version of um, Far Away for the I Quarantine. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. You know, you, know, you know, you mentioned Neil Diamond. I'm, he, here's an evil thing I did one time to a friend of mine about Neil Diamond. I actually have a, a guy in, in Thompson, where I'm from here in Georgia, that I, I told him one day, just out of the blue, I said, did you hear about Neil Diamond? He passed away. And he's like, really? What happened? I said, well, after a show in all places, New Jersey, I said, they were up there, and after the show, his manager and him were playing around, and his manager bet him a hundred bucks that he couldn't swallow an entire pack of Alka Seltzer, and oh. he took he swallowed the tablets and it, it, his stomach burst. And this guy still believes that Neil Diamond is dead. That's not <laughs> nice at all. It is not, because I love Neil Diamond. Uh, uh, you know, I was a monster fan since the time I was a kid. Yeah. And a situation arose. One of the old Dodger players in the early nineties. I lived five, six minutes from him, eight minutes from him. Mm-hmm. And he had four cars. His wife's got one car. His brother's got one car. Two cars are in the shop. And he needed a ride to Dodger Stadium. Mm-hmm. And I pull into the player's parking lot with him. And like timing, a gold Mercedes pulled next to us. And it's Neil Diamond. Oh, man. And I, I looked at my son. I you know, who's, who's a you know black guy? And I said, holy shit, it's Neil Diamond. He goes, Who's that? Mm. I said, okay, you don't listen to that kind of music. I get it. Okay. I'm like, he's the Jewish singer like most. Okay. This is who he, you know, <laughs> got out and, and Neil Diamond got out of his car. And, you know, and you got to walk, you got to walk through the same gate, you know. Mm. And uh, I introduced myself. How you doing? I said, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm a big fan. Yeah. You know, I said, actually, I lived for a while across the street from your sister. And he kind of looked at me and I told him the name of the street. He goes, yeah, she did live on. She does live on that street. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I said, I'm driving one of the players to the park here. And, oh, that's nice. So we talked for a few minutes. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm singing the national anthem. <laughs> so I ended up right outside the dugout for the national anthem, and then I went to my seat. Oh, he was a man. sweet guy, you know. Oh, man, that is amazing. That you know, is... there's just things in life that happen. Yeah. You know, it doesn't happen to everybody, but... These are things that, you know, happen. Man. You know, most most people, you just want them to smile and be semi-nice. If they're famous, mm-hmm. the ones that aren't, you put them on a different list. You don't buy their stuff anymore. You don't go see their movies. You don't go to their concerts. That's just the way that it is. Yeah, I've, I've got comics that I, you know, used to love. And I've seen how they are with some of their fans. You know, they just almost feel like they're too big for their fans, and you can't do that. I mean, that's who put you where you're at. And I, I hate to see a comic like that. You know, like you know, I mean, I've met 
you know, and, and I don't put myself above anybody else, but I've done work that people know, so it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And there have been people that I've met, and, you know, they're just not very nice people. And somebody says, hey, did you know blah, blah, blah? And they go, really? Oh, my God. And then they talk to me like I'm a person because they're a fan. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Two minutes ago, I was a fan of yours. Now you're a fan of mine, and you're going to be nice to me? All right, whatever. Yeah. But you don't forget that stuff. No, no, most definitely not. You know, and what? You know Ron, Ron, the Ron Howard, great example. Mm -hmm. One of the nicest, sweetest guys you could ever meet. Mm -hmm. He's another one, no ego at all. I had to do a, a autograph private signing with him in his brother's home, and he was nothing but nice. And his brother mentioned that I had been in a toy with Pryor and Gleason, and Ron Howard is a Jackie Gleason fan. Mm -hmm. And he just, he was just like, you got to tell me about him. I never got to meet him, blah, blah, blah. He turned into fanboy, and it was hysterical, but he was nice the whole time. Yeah. You know, it just took it to a different level, you know. And then the things that I asked him were not the typical things most people ask him. They want to know about happy days, or they want to know about, you know, uh, uh, Andy Griffith and all. Mm -hmm. No, I wanted to know about him shooting the shootest with John Wayne and Lauren Bacall. That's what I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. It hadn't been a long time since I watched that. I think about two months. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Yeah, you know, one thing that I've, I've been, like I say, I, I study up a little bit on people before I do these things. I don't do it a lot because I don't want to say, well, you know, you were in this obscure thing back in 1928. You know, I don't want to be that guy. But um, one thing that I saw that I do like a lot is the fact that you're, you, you know, being a former child actor, you, you kind of looking out after child actors too and making sure that yeah, they're, I mean, they're treated well. Yeah, um... You know, when you're in and around the industry for over 40 years, you learn things. You learn what to do, what not to do, what look, what to look out for. I was a member of an organization for several years. They, they, you know, the guy that ran it wanted me to be the president, which basically meant that I was just a mouthpiece, which was fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't out for me. You know, I wanted to help kids, educate parents, educate kids on things that are good, bad, and different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the responsibility that comes with it. You know, um, here, again, these are just things that happen. I was at uh, a deli on, uh, in Studio City, California, and I had just left, and I'm standing in the parking lot with a friend of mine who was chit-chatting, and two navigators pull in two big SUVs, and who's there? Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. And my friend looked at me and said, no, you're not really going to go inside. I said, oh, yeah, I am. There's no question. And I went inside and told him who I was. Believe it or not, he had not seen the film, which is fine. One of his friends knew who I was, though. Mm -hmm. And I talked to him, and I said, hey, the gravy train is not going to last forever. Find yourself a nice woman. Buy a house outside of L.A. Go live 10 lifetimes as happy as you want. You know, you need all of this after a while, like you need a hole in the head. Yeah. You know, well, he didn't leave L.A. He did buy a house someplace else. He did find somebody, get married, let him make babies, and live the rest of his life in happiness. He wants to still perform? Absolutely. You do what you want to do. But, you know, I felt it was something I needed to say to the guy. Hey, you know, the Lamborghinis are not necessary, man. You know, you got a whole lot of money now, but you can blow it in a short amount of time. If you don't do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, did, did he need to hear that? Probably not. But really, he did. His friend that knew who I was said, hey, man, you, you say stuff to him nobody has ever said. I said, I'm not a fan. I didn't know. You would put, you put on a Justin Bieber song if you didn't tell me who it was. I wouldn't have had a clue. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't a fan. I wasn't looking for an autograph or a photo with him or whatever. It's not what I... I was there to do. Put a little thought in his brain. This isn't going to last forever, man. Enjoy what you got. Make it last. You got enough money for five generations, eight generations of your family already. Go enjoy life. You know, so that's part of, you know, something, you know, that I did, you know. And I mean, there were other instances of people, drugs, alcohol, whatever. And you got to talk to somebody. You got to say, hey, man, you know, Richard Pryor told me this. 
you know, this is, I, I, I give him all the credit. It's not for me. Mm-hmm. He said, which road would you rather travel on? Route 66 that goes all the way across the country from one end to the other? Or the one that goes to the end of the block and there's a brick wall? Which which road do you want to take? That's a good point. That's a, that's a simple, simple question to answer, you know. And you explain it to people and they kind of look at you funny and they think about it, you know. And some get the message, some don't, you know. But... You can only you, you can only try and help. You can lead the horse to water. You can't make them drink the water. Yeah, I learn that a little bit every day. Some of the, some of the people we deal with, you know, we'll every everywhere has repeat patients who call, you know, a hundred times a month for the same thing, you know. And you, you try and educate people, try and tell them, okay, you know, you need to do this, you need to stop doing this. Here's why, and. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. And two days later, on your next shift, you're picking them up again for the same thing. And people aren't going to change the behavior until they hit the brick wall. Yeah. Once they hit the brick wall, they sort of get it for the most part. I mean, are there people who OD and then six weeks later they OD again? Absolutely. That's not their brick wall. You know, their brick wall consists of one of two things. They either figure it out or they end up in a box. Yeah. That's life. Yeah, I, you know, there's no, there's no set rules to this game. You know, today we're here. You know, I sort of believe in fate and destiny. Everything happens for a reason, and there's a book that's written. We don't get to read the book. We don't get to see the book. But every day is a new page. Mm-hmm. And eventually there's a page that says the end, that that's it, and that's when it's your time. Mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, you know, we lost Corey Haynes. You know, now it's been 10 years. You know, he was 38 years old. Yeah. Just about 38 years old. His book came to an end. That's what was meant to be. We don't enjoy it. We don't like it. But that's what it was. Yeah. You know, there's other people that live to 103, 104. They got a big book. Yeah. You know, yeah. I believe in enjoying every day. You know. Stay positive. Try and enjoy every day, no matter what's going on. Are there tough days? Absolutely. Are there horrible days? Absolutely. But then there's good and great days. Yeah, you know, try and enjoy every day. Yeah, talking about Corey Haim, you know, I, you know, obviously never knew him, but you know, I, I know a lot of his work, you know, and I, I know he had a lot of his own demons. Everybody does, and uh, but from what from everything I've read and understand about him. You know, just all of it's second, third hand, you know. Aside from the demons, he was a great guy from what I understand. He was an absolute sweetheart. He was a pussycat. He was just somebody you wanted to hang out. Yeah. Laughing, smiling, joking. You know, yeah, he had his demons, you know, and he he had gotten through a lot of them, you know, toward the end. Um, You know, unfortunately, again... Did he OD? No. Did something like that happen? No. He got walking pneumonia. 2010 was the year of the walking pneumonia. Yeah. You know, other celebrities, Brittany Murphy, the actress, she passed from it. Her husband passed from it. There were others. Corey was one of them. Mm -hmm. It was what was meant to be. We don't like it, like I said, but that's what happened. Yeah. But Hayne was one of the nicest kids I ever was friends with, an older brother to, you know, he uh, he had class. Yeah. He respected people. Absolutely adored his mother. You know, liked his father. He, you know, just unfortunately, that's what happened. Yeah. But yeah. if you'd have met him, you'd have liked him. He was a fun guy. Yeah. He was really a good guy. Next one. One thing I have seen is you know, while yes, is is acting. You know, you're you're playing a part. You're you're doing a role, but I've I've figured out inside of every little piece of anything like that you do, there's always a little piece of a part of you in there somewhere. And uh, I, I'm a people watcher. I, I watch people like that, and just like say on on a lot of his stuff, the way he smiles. Well, yes, that's that may be the character smile, but that his is in there somewhere. Oh. And, and things like that. You that can tell, kid, tell about people like that sometimes. 
that kid's smile could light up a room. He just had a great smile. Yeah. You know, great laugh. Jokester. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, I'm sure you get asked these, these, these type questions all the time. And it's, I don't want to say aggravating because, I mean, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, everybody pictures, you know, when when the child actors, you know, they have what what I, I call different different crops. You know, this this two years you got these kids, and then they grow up a little bit, and you got these over here all of a sudden. Everybody pictures them all hanging out together. Was that how it was, kind of? Or, I mean, I, I don't imagine you'll have like the big child star meeting every Friday afternoon where everybody did. No, we, just... we had we had parties that were arranged by different people, you know, that we would go to, you know, once a month or whatever it was. Oh, we would just, you know, just all say, hey, let's go hang out on Thursday at this place. Mm-hmm. You know, five, six, eight, ten of us would go. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, there were parties in Hollywood where 40 of us would gather, 50 of us, 80, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And they were fun, you know. Yeah. And parents were there, so it's not like we were just running wild, you know. Oh, yeah. Security was there, parents were there. And we had fun, karaoke, lip sync contests, people would get up on stage and sing, dance, and, you know, whatever they did, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, so we got a chance to all hang out amongst our peers without the fans or anybody else. You know, I'm not disrespecting them. I'm just saying yeah. there's time for you to hang out with your friends. You know, you're a regular kid. You go to the movies, go to a mall, whatever it is with your buddies. When you're a celebrity of any kind, you go places. People want to come up to you. Oh, my God, I loved you in this. I loved your neck. Like an autograph, like a picture, whatever. It is. Yeah, that's part of the job, too. Yeah. But you got to have time for yourself, you know. Um, I was always pretty lucky in that. You know, I, I, you know, growing up in central New Jersey, when the movies came out, most people knew me. Yeah. So, you know, I could go anywhere. Hey, Scotty, what's going on? Hey, Scotty, what's, how you doing? Okay, you know, but there were people... Some I didn't know, and they would just say hi. Oh, I live over here. Oh, I live down the street from you. Oh, I live here. Okay, cool. You know? Yeah. But it, it wasn't like today with the barrage of social media and the internet and the TMZs and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't go through that. I didn't have that. You know? Yeah. And I can go anywhere, you know, which is fine. You know? There are people that want to draw attention to themselves. So they'll wear a hat and glasses and this and that. People know that's what the so and so. That's who you're going to look at. It's trying to stand yeah. out, not stand out, you know. And, yeah, I go out in a t-shirt and a hat. It's like it is what it is, you know, or just the beach. You know, just go out and you just go and do things. Yeah. And sometimes I get recognized. Sometimes I don't. That's okay too. Yeah. You know, I get to go and have a nice dinner at Benihana. You know, and do people recognize me? And there's sometimes, you know, and that's fine. You know. You know, I'm not Flavor Flav who's got a clock around his neck. Everybody knows who he is. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I mentioned him because he was actually at Benihana one night when I was there, mm-hmm. and we ended up sitting at tables next to each other. <laughs> and it was just really funny. It was just really funny. <laughs> he seems like he is a hilarious person. You know, just, oh, just without even back. trying to be. Yeah. Mm. Flavor Flav. That is not a name I expected to come up in in, in a podcast with Scott Schwartz. That's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Now, yeah. now, how many people over, if you had to estimate, over your career have asked you about the poll? 95%. Yeah. I, I was, I've, I've been trying hard to avoid it. But, oh, no. I mean, it, it, listen, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, it in a, in an ensemble of people, it's a small role, but the scene is memorable. It has resonated through generations now. It's part of Americana. The movie is in the National uh, Registry, mm-hmm. now, you know, Library of Congress. Uh, it's taken on a different life of its own that nobody could have foreseen. Yeah. So, you know, would you rather be a part of something that people love and cherish and appreciate or something that nobody would ever care about? You got a good point. You know, you know, I mean, I, uh, 
you know, I I have the films that I like that are obscure or just funny, something I grew up with that nobody would know today. Yeah. They were just movies that were made. You know, there's tens of thousands that get thrown on a wall and sometimes one or two stick and sometimes they don't. Mm-hmm. You know, and but there are films that I love and I love the people in them. You know, and you know, I've met actors from some of the, some of those types of films, and they look at me with this absolute bewildered look on their face, like that's the movie of mine you really love. I'm like, absolutely, mm-hmm. you know, because that's my taste. Yeah, you know, Christmas Story is a a heartwarming film. It's a relationship movie between a father and a son. And then you got all the other stuff. You got the bullies and you got the friends and all of that. And the tongue and the flagpole stuck out. It's the bunny suit, the rifle, the tongue and the flagpole. That's just what it is. Yep. You know, and I'm I'm thankful that Bob Clark put me in that role in that position. You know, God rest his soul, he's no longer with us, but you know, our director. Mm-hmm. Um but hey, you know, it's something I know I'm gonna be asked as long as I'm walking the earth. People are going to ask me about it. So what did you want to know about it? What did I want to know about it? Ah, well, I, you know, the, the bad part is with, with the Internet now, I saw a thing on Facebook a while back, how the poll thing was done, you know, talking about the little hole with suction in it. You know, I've seen that. And just, you know. Yeah, there's, you know, there was, a, there was a real pole, and then they put a piece of plastic that they painted mm-hmm. to make it look real with a little hole in it and a suction tube that went into the snow and there was a little motor kind of like the old dirt devil vacuum cleaner kind of motor mm-hmm. and uh it acted like a, a, a suction tube that's basically what it was mm-hmm. so you just put your face on it you know put your tongue on it and it just stopped yeah. and i mean there were takes where i tried to pull away too much and my tongue flopped off you know all right let's do it again yeah. you know but at the end you get the product that that they wanted, you know, all of the, as I say, the shtick that I did, um, that was all me, you know, the script says flick, stick, tongue to pull, that's all it says, mm-hmm. you know, the come back, don't leave me, come back, suck, the, all that stuff, that was just stuff I came up with, mm-hmm. you know, Bob, Bob Clark uh, knew that I had worked with Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason and I had done another film, he knew I could handle anything, and he just said, hey, Whatever comes natural. Whatever you think of, just do it. If I hate it, I'll tell you that I hate it. Okay? Mm. And I did it. And he's like, that's, that is really good. That's great. Give me more. Go go overboard. Okay. And I went overboard. He's like, you know what? Nope. I like the way you did it the first time. Do it the same way you did it the first time. Okay. Mm. And as an actor, that's your job, to be able to do things differently and make it the way that they want. You know? So I did it. They liked it. And it came out the way it came out and people love it and that's great yeah cool you know and the one thing that always struck me strange in the movie and I'm the only person that this would ever just would even think of it is it must have been strange having the last name Schwartz in this movie but you're not playing the guy named Schwartz oh well yeah I mean that's just funny <laughs> yeah we you know, know. Because, they, they, because they would you know all of us would be you know, on a break or whatever, and they would say Schwartz, and I'd go, yeah, they go, no, the other Schwartz. <laughs> yeah, that just, that always struck me as funny, and I may be one of the only people in the world that ever thought of that. No, yeah, there, there have been people before you that have asked me about the Schwartz. I say, oh, yeah, I was the Schwartz, but not that Schwartz. <laughs> nice. Well, Scott, I've had a ball, man. We've gone for almost an hour, and I know you've got a bunch of stuff to do today. Um... Man, I've had a ball. Anytime you want to come on here, you got this number. All you got to do is holler, and I'll say, hey, fat boy, I want to talk, and I'm here. Okay, you can reach out to me, too, if there's something, you know, going on, and you want to fix that, that's fine. Okay. Listen, right now, anybody who hears this, stay safe, stay healthy, do the right things. We're going to get through this. You know, good health and prosperous, you know, futures and, and, and present to everybody, you know, and just know that tomorrow is not given. Enjoy today because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Outstanding. Well, Scotty, I appreciate it. You got it. You stay safe out there, my friend. Thank you. You too. All right. Thanks a bunch. We'll talk to you later. (laughs) Bye-bye.